Hey, what is up guys? It's finally a little bit warm here and I am getting some work done on the RV today. You'll have to excuse my appearance <laughs> because I literally just got off work early and decided to come out here real quick before the sun goes down and try to get some seat belts bolted to the floor. Um, and I also discovered something that's not real good. So over the uh, next couple days, I'm going to get the seat belts in, get the couch enclosed and fastened to the floor, and then move on to probably that up there, the uh, nasty overcab area. Um, earlier today, my mom helped me move the uh, futon, which nothing was attached, but the you know seat part of it was sitting on top of the frame that was built and it's super heavy and awkward so my mom came and helped me move it so that I could get to the floor and yeah let me show you so originally there was a little banquette in here and there were you know seat belts attached to the floor through these holes one here one there and then two on that side as well. And well, that doesn't quite work for this kind of seating arrangement. So I am going to reuse this hole here, which already has the seat belt bolted. Same with one back there in that corner. And I have to make a new hole here in the center for the center seat belts. So I'm definitely gonna be doing that right now. Um, but I also noticed, which maybe I can get it all in frame. Um, I guess it's not really, it's, it's kind of hard to see, but it's not stable. Um, I'm going to beef up this structure. I had somebody help me build it and yeah, it's not good. So for instance, This back leg, I don't have my tripod, so I probably can't really, but like when I moved the futon, this back leg was like completely like that, <laughs> like scooched to the side. Um, I can grab that leg and just move it and turn it around. So that's no good. So I'm gonna put a piece of wood back there across that and maybe across the corner here i don't know i'm just gonna i'm gonna beef it up but i gotta try to leave the front here open as much as possible because it's going to be access for storage underneath plus the cable is back there so you know we gotta have access to the cable if you plan on hooking it up so that's on the agenda once it's all beefed up then I'm going to skin it with plywood along the front and that side there with access doors for storage. And then once that's done, then I'm going to attach it to the floor. Um, very probably overkill, but I'm gonna like put a ton of screws the whole way around down into the floor so that this is not going to go anywhere in case there were an accident or something um, and then here's the futon and this is going to go back on top and again I'm going to screw up into the futon a whole bunch of places and make it all solid all one piece and really just safe and sound so I think that's enough talking. I am going to get to work. I'm going to drill that hole. I don't know why, but I'm nervous about it. I think just because this floor is like two inches thick. I know there's there's nothing under there. It is a compartment from the outside. I mean, you can see I'm drilling my hole uh, right there. I made a little X and this hole here, obviously there's nothing under here except styrofoam and particle board and then into the space that's underneath. So I'm going to do that. I did not bring my tripod, so I don't know if I'll be able to 
actually film doing it, but um, yeah, I'll be back. Alrighty, so I still have to tighten that seat belt bolt down. Um, I need another set of hands underneath the RV. And as you just seen, I put that little piece of wood in there and made it a lot more stable. And putting the plywood along the front will also help with that. But now I gotta figure out how I'm going to cut that plywood in a somewhat straight line. So that should be interesting. Um, yeah. So I'm gonna start with just making one solid piece for along the front and for there. Then I'll hold it up and just kind of decide where the compartment's gonna be. I think I'm just gonna go with this one and this one. Because if this was a compartment, you know, there wouldn't be a whole lot of space. You'd have to come in and reach around the side. So yeah, one here, one here. I have the doors saved from the banquette which I'm going to reuse here so after I have my plywood cut I will get those doors and figure out placement and cut those holes out as well. Well, it appears to be fine. It's a little like there's um, there's a hump in the middle here. Maybe if I flip it over and put that hump on top, maybe this side's straighter. I do know that the board that I was using as a guide wasn't 100% straight, so this side probably has the hump in the other direction. Um, yeah. I'm kind of proud of myself. You know, I take on these things that I've never done before, it scares the shit out of me, and, you know, I suck it up and do it, and when I'm done, I'm happy that I did. I mean, there's my uh, philosophy for life, I guess. <laughs> yup, I'm not gonna screw it in. I was going to, but now that I think about it, I don't want to screw it in until I have the holes cut because it'll be a lot easier to cut the holes if this board is like laying flat instead of screwed in here but I can take measurements get the doors and see exactly where the holes are going to be cut be centered here what I'll do to make it a little bit easier just kind of line up center it make a mark there probably couldn't see that on camera but all I did all I did was made little marks here and here to where the um, whatever vertical not vertical but you know what I mean these boards are here here and there and then I can take this board this board back in and center those doors, you know, using those marks that I made. Center them this way on that. And same with the top and bottom, which they're, you know, two by twos. So it's an inch and a half-ish. 
like that. That's the plan. That's what I'm gonna do. Maybe after lunch. <laughs> I'm slowly, slowly getting uh, getting my steam back. Um, you know, it's been a couple months, so it's gonna take a little while to get back into the groove, but it's coming along. And this is, to me, like the fun part because I'm not dealing with stupid water damage and all of that stuff. So this is like the easy part, in my opinion. Um, it's supposed to be like 70 degrees today, which is awesome, but I have plans tonight so I can't like spend the whole day out here because I need to shower and get ready and all that stuff. And it's already noon, so I am going to take this board in, I'm going to take these doors in, and um, that's probably going to be it for today. I really want to get this edited and put up, but I want to wait till at least this project is done to make it, you know, a complete video, so it's taking a little bit longer. Okay, so here is my long board um, for the front of the futon, and all I did was, well, you've seen I marked the um, where the boards intersect so that I made sure my doors were centered in between them. And then I laid the doors on here where I wanted them, traced around, and then came in about a half an inch from the actual edge of the door and started cutting. I used a spade bit here on the four corners so that I could get the jigsaw in there to cut the lines. And it's actually not too bad. <laughs> I did my hair last night, if that's not obvious. <laughs> um, yeah, back to purple, which I think is my favorite, so I am digging it. Anyway, back to the futon. Um, next thing I'm gonna do is screw the seat of the futon to the base structure. Um, not looking forward to this because I have to do it laying down on the floor um, at least to get the first couple screws in if it's not bad I'll just put them all in that way but if it's a nightmare which I'm thinking it's going to be I'm gonna get a couple screws in and then I can flip it upside down and screw down um, because I have it positioned just so that you know, I can't just pick it up and move it or the base won't be exactly where I want it to be and it has to be kind of particular so that's the way I have to do it. I should have worn my glasses today. That was my shin. Son of a bitch. Okay, okay. I think... Okay, I think that's actually working. And that wasn't... <laughs> that wasn't that bad. So I'm just going to give these a light sanding. I'm not going to go crazy. Um, I just want to get some of the rough edges off um, because it's all going to be painted with several coats of paint anyway. So 
but I want to get the rough edges off of the door openings. Okay, so I just primed this piece here and this shorter piece. <clears throat> but I think I need to go get new primer and do it again, <laughs> which I really, really don't want to. There's a huge part of me that is just like, that's good enough, but these particular pieces, well, this one in the front anyway, is, is going to get a lot of wear and tear. It's going to get kicked. It's going to have feet on it. So I really want the paint to withstand all of that. But um, this is the primer I'm using. I think it's old or something. I've never seen, like, it's like water. And I've never seen that before. And I've used this kind of primer several, several times. So I think it's just old or something. I don't know. Um, yeah. So I'm going to have to run to the store and get primer and come back and do this. But I'm not giving up for the day. I am going to get this done today. Well, at least done painting because the painting obviously it will take some time to dry in between each coat so yeah i guess i'm going to walmart yay Well, it is in place now, and it sucks that I have to put these big honking screws in it, but I feel like I need to. I don't, I mean, I have little finish nails. I just don't think they're going to hold it very securely. And the board is kind of warped, so I feel like it needs to be screwed together um maybe if i i don't if i put the screws along the top edge and the bottom edge the top edge you won't see because it's kind of under the couch under the seat and the bottom edge i'm probably going to trim it out with quarter round um after the floor is down to hide like the floor seam and then like along the sides or whatever i'll just use little finish nails i think that's what i'm gonna do but yeah this is um what it looks like so far let me back up a little so it looks pretty good but yeah, if I just put like a couple screws along the bottom, very close to the floor, and a couple along the top, kind of up under there, um, they won't really be seen. And then I can just put like maybe a couple finish nails in here where that there's an up and down piece there, and over here, and at the corner. Um, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. If it looks absolutely terrible, worst case scenario, I can just putty them and paint over it. And there it is. I am so incredibly proud of myself for this. I mean, it's such an easy, basic project, but let me tell you, I, I've never done anything like this, so I just feel so proud of myself for doing it and <laughs> it actually looks good and it works all this beautiful storage under there I love it so that is gonna wrap up this 
futon project thank you guys so much for watching i hope somebody watches this and learns that they can do this in their rv because i searched and searched and searched um and i couldn't find anything i mean some pictures here and there some brief things here and there but not like a full-on how to do it type thing now my futon is stationary it does not turn into a bed i couldn't figure out how to make that work and still have it attached to the rv is so it would be safe and i could not figure it out without investing a bunch of money and time and engineering skills that i just don't have so my futon is stationary it can still comfortably sleep an adult or two small children it's safe it's got seat belts it's not going anywhere so hopefully somebody has learned something from this video and like i said the the pride that i have just is just giving me so much motivation to keep going so next up i am going to get this mess right here enclosed um we've had some rain it's still dry which is wonderful because i think i would probably cry if it wasn't um <clears throat> so it's basically just finish framing out um this big window did not have any kind of framing around it like no studs or anything around the window and my dad seems to think that that's maybe why that window was so hard to get to stop leaking um, because there's nothing really structural holding it in place so i'm going to add some two by twos around the window put some insulation up there finally finish hooking up the marker lights um yeah and then just close it in and i don't know what i'm using yet possibly beadboard or just some really really thin plywood and paint it so i hope you subscribe i hope you give me a thumbs up leave your comments and any kind of feedback you have in the description i read every single one of them and yeah that's it for this futon project and i will see you in my next video